OK, I think we have. We have the we have started the recording. And um, firstly, welcome to Reactor, Microsoft Reactor. How many of you know Reactor and you have attended before? Sessions before. All right, quite a bit of people who have attended the sessions, which is great. And uh, this is uh, our code of conduct. So this event is governed by the code of conduct. So make sure that uh, uh, you respect people here, and you know, you know, be aware of what you speak, and it does not hurt anyone else. Okay. So there are a bunch of things uh, which is out there. Just I'll give you a um, a minute or probably uh, some time for you to read uh, read through this, and people who are online as well, um, just take a look at this. I'll just spend uh, some time there. OK, so. What are we discussing today? Uh, we are discussing Azure Hackbook. Why Hackbook? Um, because. Uh, and I used to host a couple of hackathons before. Um, again, before this role, I used to go to a lot of mentor mentoring sessions and other things. Um, so while we were doing that, uh, we thought um, there is no one place where there are easy way to get things, right? Um, because Azure is quite big, and number of services are you know, there is large number of services, and when you are at a hackathon, you know you need to understand which of which service is suited for you and which service I need to pick and other things. So uh, there needs to be an easy way to understand this. So myself and Orko, we were discussing a lot of things, and Orko was my colleague, and uh, we thought, okay, well, let's you know bring out something in GitHub repo where it is a hack book. It has all kind of content. It has code samples. It has it has place where you can go back and uh, drive stuff, right? So those are the things uh, you know which uh, which was in our mind, and that is what we um, you know we thought, okay, well, let's go back and build this up. And that's what we're going to show today. And, and also it's more important is, uh, you know, it's like how amazing it is to build on Azure. And especially in hackathons, um, what all things you can do, right? So you will learn so many things in the, at a hackathon, right? So when you're sitting at a hackathon, you will see so many things you will do with Azure. So I know that in a couple of them um, don't know what is cloud computing is. Uh, just for introduction as well. So cloud computing is nothing but you are um, using compute uh, or a network or using some sort set of services or a network. Um, so compute is what basically? It's basically uh, your CPUs and the RAMs and and some you know is also you will also use storage, right? Storage also uh, you're using it on a network, right? So. Basically, all of these things are on network, and you're, you know, accessing all of these things via network. That is what is cloud computing is. And I can go back and spin up something, uh, just click off a button. I can put this laptop onto, you know, onto network, right? So I don't need a laptop. So all I need is to how to access this and in a network and just access it and do a couple of things. Uh, I can still have my own Ubuntu. Uh, servers or different different servers, and I can use those different servers. I don't need to uh, really, you know, um, use this uh, laptop at all uh, for development purpose. So I can just use those uh, set of services. So we're going to see some of the demos uh, specifically on um, how to spin up VMs and how to use different things and um, how to use pass layers, which is platform as a service. I told you, right? There is a couple of services which are services, uh, which are some of the softwares. And uh, which is like you have a you know database, and I can click off a button. I can use a database which is on the pass layer, right? You don't need to install your database on these servers, and need to be managed these servers, right? So that is what um, you know. That is what pass layers is. So um, just for my introduction, so this is me. Um, I'm Vivek, by the way. Uh, I'm senior cloud advocate. Um, done a bunch of things. Um, been part of the IBM India Software Labs. Um, been a DevOps solution architect as well at HCL and 
couple of roles uh, in Blackberg and Noodle Next, uh, which is my own company. And then uh, I was a developer advocate at DigitalOcean. Um, and at Microsoft, there are a couple of roles I have played and to, you know, currently I'm you know, part of cloud and AI engineering team. So that's me. And if you want to get connected, you know where to connect. So these are my digital coordinates. Um, so basically when you are at a hackathon, what you do? It's a question for online folks as well. People who are at, in online, uh, you can just post your answers as well. But in an audience, like what do you what do you do at a hackathon? When some problem statement has given to you uh, to build an app or to build a solution or something, uh, what is that first thing you will do? Anyone? You get the requirements. What you need to do? Resources, tech stack. Okay. So just just for online folks here. Um, so what he says is it's it's explore basically. Yeah. You explore it a hackathon. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. So I am see uh, in online chat. So Power says, you know, try to build something, learn something new, and other stuff. That's good. Uh, but today's session, what I am focusing is um, Azure Hackbook, right? How to use Azure and how to use Azure at Hackathon, right? So what you know, what I'm going to you know, talk to you about is uh, there are a couple of things. One is Azure VMs. So this is the easiest and it is, this is the fastest for you uh, because you know it, you use it day to day. You don't have to learn something new. All you need is a you know, kind of an infrastructure which you want. It is a compute, a simple compute. Uh, which is available, so you can just go and use it. And there is a couple of more services which is there, which are pass layers. The pass layers are the best way to go forward if you are at a hackathon, right? So this is a pass layer, and there is um, you know different set of support for building microservices, standalone stuff, and containers are the big thing. And if you have a code, you're going to package it as a container and you're going to use it as a container, right? So it is basically packaging the code. You have a, you know, some lines of code and you're taking that lines of code and packaging it and then you're uh, deploying that package to some place and you're going to use that package because the, the place where you're going to deploy this package is basically to share between your friends and share, you know, obviously you are working as a team in hackathons most of the times, right? So these are all a couple of things which we are going to see. And there is static web app, and you know it's like building something. You know, go back and build your standalone uh, web apps, and uh, there is a support for that as a separate uh, service uh, which you can use. And app service is nothing but again, which I um, told you, right? It's just a web app. You have an API, or you have a, just a web app. Uh, you want to deploy and you want to control the infrastructure and everything, then you go and use Azure Web, uh, Azure App Service. So functions is something which is already there, so which is also serverless, all right? So functions is nothing but uh, a programming model, which, which is there where you can use it as a serverless and make sure that you um, design and, you know, it's basically spins up only when somebody is accessing it, right? So they don't have to be worried. So, and also you don't have to worry about cost and other things because you can have it whether as an app service plan, or you can have it with our um, Azure functions, right? So those are the things, and then there is Azure AI, right? There is there is a bunch of services in AI which you can use uh, in Azure AI, which is the cognitive services which we have. 
and you can do face recognitions and you can do speech to text translation, text to speech translations and bunch of other uh, set of services which is out there. Uh, you can make use of that while you are at the hackathon. At the hackathon, you will always you you know sometimes sometimes you'll be using all of these um, data science stuff, right? You're going to do models and build models, or trying to build um, face recognition apps, or you're trying to build uh, you know use uh, uh, the object um, you know recognizer, right? Which is OCRs, right? Which you're going to use. Uh, to capture text from the images and other things, and there are a bunch of things which you're going to do. So everything is provided under uh, Azure AI, which is the co cognitive service. So that is one thing which you will be using. So, so we're going to do demos. You know, we are, I'm, I'm done with slides, so most of the time, and I don't do much of the slides. It's more of demos. So we're going to see some of the de demos, some of these things. Uh, we're going to use uh, in in building it and deploying it. By the way, how many of you know what is containers is? Okay, so I'll just explain what containers is while doing the demo. Okay, so we will build a container. We will package a container, new container, and use it. Okay. Before even I get into Azure, let us understand how Azure is structured. Okay, so there is. This is how it is structured. The reason for me doing this slide is one, usually at a hackathon, you know, you will give your credit cards. And, you know, the first question people ask me is whether I'll be charged. You know, that is that's the first question I get. You know, I'm going to give my, you know, a credit card. Will I be charged? So this slide explains to you what you need to do at a hackathon, how you need to manage the resource, where you can put controls and how you can set it up. OK, so that's all is the focus about this slide, but also understand how Azure is structured, how cloud is structured. OK, everything in. Um, everything in Azure um, is. Basically a resource. OK, you can see here. This one. So everything in Azure um, is a resource. So it's basically a, take this as I have a mobile, right? It's my resource, right? So and there is a resource group. So I might have uh, an iPad, which is mine, and my wife might have an iPad, right? So it's hers, and she might have a phone, and it's hers, and I might have my own iPad, and my own uh, phone, right? So basically, it's two different, uh, two different people, two different group, and two different resources, right? So that's how you should think um, how it is structured, right? So there is you know, you can structure it is logically structured as groups, and each and every resource you create, all the resources, whatever I'm going to demo now, I'm going to create bunch of resources, and when I create those bunch of resources, you will see that it is all grouped under couple of resource groups, right? And then there is subscription. I need to have a subscription, right? You know, to use anything, I need to have subscription and it's like your Netflix subscription, right? So there is a subscription for everything and there is a subscription and let's come part, come to rest of the things later. But you see this at the top, there is Azure PowerShell, Azure Portal and Azure CLI. OK, so that is how you can connect to Azure. You can either connect to CLI. How many of you know what a CLI is? Okay, there is a CLI. There is a portal. Portal is UI where you can use stuff. And then there is PowerShell, which is as you know, uh, a, a bash kind of a thing, right? So then there is um, REST API endpoint, which is being provided, which is Azure Resource Manager, uh, which where you can connect. It's an API layer. It's an API layer where you, you have your client client connecting to a server, and that is how it connects. But it is not the first layer where it, it gets you know, uh, to do things. There is a one more layer which is called as Azure Resource Provider, which is basically for each resource there is a provider. And each time you create an API, say for example, you say I want to create a VM uh, through Azure Portal, you 
you just click on a couple of buttons and say create VM. It talks to Azure Resource Manager and then the resource manager says, OK, go talk to uh, the Azure Resource Provider for VM. And when somebody goes there, the most important thing, it then it gets created. But before all of these things happen, what is what is going on? There is a authentication. There is a trust, right? There is a trust. We need to trust it, right? We need to trust that this person is the right person to create the VMs. So that is what the trust is. And there is Azure Active Directory, and you know it's like you take your college, right? You have different departments, and each department yeah, there might be MBA department, there might be a uh, engineering, there might doctor, you know, the hospital department or you know whatever MBBS department you might have within your college, and then within that you might have you know. Um, electric engineering, computer science engineering, there could be mechanical engineering. All of these are separate subscriptions, right? They can have their own subscriptions, right? There, there would be a control over that. And you can see there is association. And you can see there is a couple of things, which is role based access and other things for controlling the uh, who is accessing what, whether this person has the right to spin up a VM or not or spin up a VM with this size or not. All of these things are policies and other things which will come into picture. And you can also limit the resources. OK, there is a financial commitment limits and resource limits. So you can also go back there and limit how much you want to spend, how much you want to use. So this is where uh, it is important. If you are at a hackathon, if you are at a, you know, if you're using Azure, don't worry about your credit cards. OK. Just use it. Just go there and make sure that this is set up properly and that's it. And whenever you are done with it, what you should do? Delete the delete the resource group. That's OK. This is the resource group. Everything gets deleted. OK, so that's how it works. So all the resources under resource group you can delete and nothing will happen to your credit cards. OK, done. This is um, this is how it is set up. Now we will see some of the demos and um, we'll understand how this works in, you know, in, a, in a real world scenario. And then. Yep. How much, how much is the. How many services? 400 services, no? Sorry, um, 40. And each service has its own. Yeah. Yep. Can't hear. Yeah. Okay. Let's get started. People who are online, uh, is there any questions? No. Okay. So let's get started here. So this is the Azure portal. So when you log in, this is one of the ways to um, access uh, Azure. I, I was showing right. There is CLI. There is different things, um, and this is one of the way to access Azure. This is cloud. Yes. So what is the difference between different? I have used Azure Shield. Right? Yeah. 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 PowerShell has its own set of uh, scripts. scripts, so um, it's kind of a bash, right? So it's it's a yeah, it's a it's a different. Um, you you most of the Linux users use bash, but Windows users use PowerShell, so that's the kind of a difference. Yeah, um, okay. So we are here. We are in the dashboard and. Uh, this is one of the way to access it. And what we will do now is we're going to create a VM. OK, I'm going to show you how to create a VM. What is a VM? It's nothing but you're taking this laptop and putting it in you know, network and you are going to use it in network. So we're going to create VM. And I have a bunch of demos, so hopefully everything works today. Um, this, so as I told you, right, there is subscription. And there is resource group. So for each and every resource, VM is a resource. VM, VM is a 
single standalone resource, right? Everything you create in Azure is a resource and each and every resource gets associated to a resource group and resource group is associated to a subscription and the subscription is where the billing happens. So you can hear me right at the end. OK. Perfect. So we will give what name? Demo Central US. So these are regions. Regions are nothing but where your data center might sit, right? So where it is sitting and how it is, how you can use. There are availability zones and other things. I'm taking Ubuntu server, simple Ubuntu server, and then there is some size, uh, password. So I'm going to use password, but it is not the real uh, use case when you're putting something in. Uh, you know, in, in, in production and other things. But if you are at a hackathon and you want to show something, you want to make sure that you just deploy your code there and start using it. You know, you don't really have to worry about doing this SSH public key and other things. You just need to worry about your, um, you know, what you're going to do at the hackathon. So I'm just giving some password. OK, so how to access? How to access and other things? So basically there's a VM. How can I access this VM or a network? There is an inbound traffic to this. There's an outbound traffic from this, right? So there is there's going to be two ways the traffic is. So that's what uh, this means. And then there is disk. A um, couple of disk is disk is nothing but the storage and other things. So you just add it. And then there is networking. Networking is is a very important concept, but you don't have to worry about at the hackathon. Networking is basically this, right? Uh, there are three different rooms, but you have access to only this room, right? So basically, the VMs, which is part of this particular, you know, you are, take take yourself as a VM, and you know you can interact with each other, and you are part of this room, but you cannot interact with others outside or go to those rooms outside, right? There is a there is a traffic control there. So the similarly how cloud also works. There is a you know kind of a virtually this been created for you and the same way the sections has been done in within this room as well. I can break you into different sections and I can add you into that rooms, different rooms and say you are only associated to those rooms. So that's how you can structure your machines as well. OK, think yourself as a machine and you know, see the broader picture here, right? So that's how it works. Cool. So there is load, load balancer and other things, you know, to balance load and you don't have to worry about it in that the hackathon. It's just it's just a part of it and you don't have to worry about monitoring and other things and what it does and all those stuff. So let's go and just create it. Right, so. So now everything is getting created you know, on on a network. So I'm not doing anything uh, on my laptop. I'm not creating any virtual things on my laptop. I'm not using my laptop resources for this. All things are happening there. I can scale this machine. I can increase the size of the machine. And if you see the size when I chose, it was like some, you know, some GB RAM and some virtual CPUs and other things which I selected. I can select more. You know, depending upon your load, depending upon your structure, you can select more. So this is nothing but um, how you create a VM, right? So just it's getting created. Um, while it's getting created, uh, let's wait for it to happen, and uh, we will see that. Um, until then, we have any questions? No. Okay. Let's do this then. So I'm going to show you some code. You can see the screen. You can see that. You can see my code. Who can see my code? You can see my code. Who can see my code? OK, then you're saying I can see your code. I was just confusing you. OK, so I'm going to, I have a simple. Spring. Spring framework. It's a simple spring framework. You can generate the spring framework even in the 
and our spring um, dot io huh? there's some string right some dot io you go there and you can also generate this code so nothing special i've added so i'm just taking this code and uh, let's see what what this code can do and it's basically a simple spring app and uh, i'm trying to build this up and deploy it to app service so i'm going to deploy this code to azure app service before i do that you know let's take a look at the code once right so oops why it is taking uh something wrong <laughs> not allowing me to select that oh Okay. Open code, hands on code. What we did it here, or oh, we didn't do that. Okay. What is it? Where is my CLI? Where did my CLI go? OK. So. There's a bunch of things open. So let's see this. Now you can see my code. You can see? Yes. OK. <laughs> I type something. OK, so here is the code. Um, what it does is um, it's a simple. API, OK, so if you go to the slash, it says greetings from uh, Spring Boot. So it's simple API, which is here. We can change this. We can say, OK, we'll We'll add um, what is this message? So let's see with first API and then we'll add message. OK, greetings from. Reactor, OK, so now I have the code. I have everything, so all I need is uh, to build this code. So how do I build this code? Over here. I'll just need to configure it. So this is nothing but a Java specific thing. OK, so this is a Java Spring Framework is a Java thing and it is built via Maven. Maven is a building packaging tool, so it's just a simple packaging tool and I'm going to use that and configure it. So this is for. Why? Anyone? Go. Oh man, not in the right folder. OK. Cool, so this is a simple command. So if you're at a hackathon and if you're using Java, you can just go and deploy this way or you can use the CLI. Or you can use Azure app CLI, which is there and just use it to run and you know, then deploy your code. You have the code. This is the code. In a simple code, you just take that and deploy it. And this one right now we are building it, but this is directly deploying it. If you see at the bottom, you know it is asking you for a couple of values because this is Java. This is an app. This is a Maven plugin which I have used. There is a Maven plugin for Java, uh, which is nothing but the Azure uh, Web App plugin. So I'm just using that plugin, plugin, uh, you know, uh, to build it. So this is. Um, I'm, I'm choosing two and Java eight and I have uh, one which is the size of the box and then yes, you know it's basically which Java you are using and other things. So build is successful. It's still the local box. It is not deployed it to the cloud. The code is still in my box. The code is still running in my 
uh, system. It's not running. It's basically it's built. It's basically a packaged and it is still there. So we haven't run it yet. We will run it that before we do it, uh, you know, before we build a containers out of this. So let's go back and uh, see how you can deploy. So I'm skipping testing of this. So I want to skip the test. Um, there is one you know, way in the code where we are testing it. So I'm not doing the test. I'm just skipping the test. So this is deployment. So basically what I have done is I have um, I have the code. I've taken the code and I have uh, packaged it via Maven and I've made sure that it is there in my system. And now I'm using that and deploying this to Azure App Service. So Azure App Service is a pass. It's simple. It's there. The code is going to run now there. I can also run this code locally as well, but you know it's easy to keep deploying your code to uh, Azure App Service. You can keep changing. Now we will change. Now I will make some changes to the code after the deployment is done, and we can redeploy and see how it gets redeployed. So that's you know that's how you can use this in the hackathon. So if you're if you're ready with your code, the first piece of code. This is a simple API which I have done, right? You don't have to write the complete API to deploy to the cloud. That is what I'm trying to tell you. You don't have to uh, be perfect uh, when you deploy something to the cloud. You just have to deploy something at the first and you know this is the way you're going to deploy it for the rest of the time uh, of the hackathon. And you just need to make sure you deploy the first version of your code perfectly. Once you've done that perfectly, all you're going to do is you know, keep changing your code and redeploying it. That's all, right? So that's that's one of the way to build and deploy stuff. So this is uh, getting deployed right now. While this is getting deployed, we will go and see what happened to our VM. Yes, we have the VM ready, right? So we had created a VM, and you know, it's basically it's ready for us to use. So let me go to the resource. And there is one amazing um, service, which is Bastion, right? So if you see this, there is one amazing service uh, which you can click on it and create it. This is a way to access your VM, okay? So there was two ways to access it, right? One was the password, one was the SSH, public key. So I'm not using the public key. I'm going to use the uh, bastion to access it, and then you know make changes, add code there, run your code, run you know your nginx, your Apache, your Tomcat, whatever you want to run, host your app, and just use it, right? So that's what. Um, that's what we are trying to do now. So while it is getting created again, you know, I don't want to uh, waste time here. It is successful now. The app has been deployed to the cloud. So you can see here, you can see this, right? So here you can see the artifact, HTTPS, which is here, right? Which is nothing but our code. Hopefully it is up. OK, so you can see the code running. Right, this is a simple API. Now we have set our system ready, right, for hackathon. Like I have a code ready. I had used some CLI command, two, three commands. My code is there in the cloud. It is accessible via, um, you know, via a URL, you know, even for judges, you can share this URL now. It's already right. There's nothing to do. So you just go there, go to your cloud, you know, code. Where's your code? Where is your code? Yes, code. Okay. This is let's close this. Now you go to your cloud code and say, let's try this. You want to create an API called message, right? You created a new message. And we will save this. And what do you need to do now? Yeah. 
you need to build it and deploy it now. But what if I deploy it? Is it? Let's try. I don't know. So we'll try. So hopefully it will build and deploy. Um, so this is the same command I'm using. I'm not using any different commands. So you know, if I'm using a different command, then it is a different thing, but the same command. It won't work here. I need to hit flash messages or message. It's error because it's not yet deployed. Huh? Oh yeah, it is not deployed. Let it be deployed. This is still getting created. It takes some time to create this one. So that is the reason why I am uh, switching between two different services. One is the VM, one is the app service, right? So it takes some time based on um, the size of the box and everything which is there. It takes some time to come up. So we we'll wait, wait for it to come up. While that is done, whether this gets created, no, it's there. Hopefully it is deployed. Or still going there. So that means we have to build. Let's build before we do it. Oops, it's going to test. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do this. OK, so now we're going to install this. I mean, install. <coughs> now build is successful. Now we are going to deploy. So hopefully now it changes the code and then we will be able to see it. So when it gets deployed, let's wait for it to deploy. Ta -da. Cool, now it's done. So we are in, so this is Bastion. Okay, this is a UI for Bastion. So I have the service now set up on the VM. So now I'm just giving my username and password. So whatever I password I had, given while creating it. So oh, I have done a pop-up blocker or the solo. None connect. OK, you can see this. OK. No. It's not required for this. So Bastion will not work. Right? PD code has to be allowed. No. TCP and HTTP is traffic only. No, no. No, no. Nothing is required. It should connect. Something is wrong there. It says bad network. It says bad network. I have done this. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't need 80. It's a network issue, but something. Network connection to Bastion host appears to be slow. Anyways, this is how you connect. Once you click on that connect button, so you go into that in a box, you can you know, play around with it. So it's just a VM again. It's, and, and by the way, you don't have to use that 
if you want to. You can also use this with this if button you see here, the cloud shell. This is also one way of accessing things. So you can also use that. So you can also create a cloud shell which is connected to a storage and we can easily perform a couple of um, activities through this cloud shell. OK, so that's how you can use it. But that's yeah. Hopefully this has been deployed. OK. See. So now the API got deployed. We did slash message, right? So we build it and we deployed it. So you can keep changing your code now. You you just go there. You have the Java code. You 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 know you start creating the APIs for it, and now you have a Spring app, Spring framework, and you just create those APIs, and now you start deploying it, and it gets deployed, right? So that's what um, you know. That's what uh, you know in Azure App Services, and just just through some of the commands which I gave, the two three commands which I gave, just take those two three commands. You run those two three commands, it gets deployed for the first time, and then after that you are just running it. Okay, and for VM as well is the same thing. So now you know we have this code. We will go back and package this as a Docker. Okay, the same code which is there, we'll package it as a Docker, and we're going to use it as a Docker thing, and then we will see how exactly uh, we can build it. Right. So let us go and go to my so we have it, the form file here. This code here. So I'm going to create a Docker file. OK, so uh, we'll go to my VS code. And we'll build a Docker. So, which is uh, my Docker code? I have. Where is the Docker code? Okay. I have the Docker code here, right? So, simple command which I have. I will not go back and type all of these things just to keep this in check, right? So, that's not my jar file name, by the way. That's uh, you know different jar file name. So what is my jar file name? So if I go to target, you can see my jar file main name is this, right? So I'm going to copy this. Hopefully I copy it, and I'm going to make changes to the code. OK, so I'm just making changes to the code by adding the jar file name. So anyone who knows how to build a Docker file, these are set of commands, right? These are set of commands which you can do. And this is just an open JTK. I'm just opening uh, 80, 80, 80, 0 port. Um, and uh, what I'm doing, nothing else. So there is a command which I'm going to run. So simple stuff, nothing different. So I'm just um, showing you that. So. OK, so hopefully this is the right. Docker file is done. And. OK. Now I am in the this folder, so I'll do a Docker build. OK. So if you're familiar with Docker, it's all about images. I have a bunch of images with me, so you can see. I do a lot of stuff, so there's a bunch of images with me, but I'm I'm not going to use all of these images here now, so I'm just increasing some stuff so you can see the screen. So let's go and build. So what what it does is it's going to package this code now into a image. OK, image is nothing but your static representation of your code. 
OK, so it's nothing but a static representation. So there is a code. If I have to run this code. On your machine, if I have to run the same code on your machine, I need infrastructure right, right? So that is why you package it as a Docker and you are also running a Docker engine. He's also running Docker engine. I'm also running a Docker engine. So I package this as a Docker image and. The same image you can run it, the same image I can run, the same image he can run. Nothing will happen, nothing will break, so you can easily use it. So that is what um, Docker image is, right? So we're going to use the same uh, concept here. So this is we have written a Docker file, so we're going to package it. So this is what the package means, right? There is. Docker build FNT. So Spring app. Demo. I'm going to name it as version one, and I'm, going to, I'm just going to build it. Right. So we are just going to build this, uh, you no, know, image. So it takes some time to build image, but once it is built, it's ready for us to use. While it is building, we will create a registry. We'll create a registry, right? What is what is a registry? Container registry. Yeah, we know you are superb. Right, so we have you. You have the code. You packaged it. You packaged it as a image, right? But how do I access that image? How does he access the image? We need a repository, right? We need a central place, right? We need one place where you know the images are there and everybody takes that image and then use it in their uh, laptop right in their uh, Docker engine, which they have just run con command and it gets uh, you know gets ready for you to use, right? So that is what Docker registry is. It's a central repository for uh, your package, which is a static representation which is being created, right? So how do you do that? So you just go to portal again. So you can see I told you we can also create shell, which I told you. So we'll not use this anymore. So just go to portal. Just go to create. So you can see here. Create. And in this create, go to containers. This is uh, where you can find a couple of services with respect to containers. And in container, there is container registry here. Go create container registry. So we, again, we will select the hack book. And we will give a name. Bytes. Oh, it's already exist. 001 does not exist. Hopefully it does not exist. Good. Then we have networking, whether you want to make it public or not. Then you have tags, you have reviews. And create. Right? So yes, yes. So there is a question uh, here uh, for people who are online. Um, can we use Docker Hub for this? Yes, you can. You know, this is this is I mean uh, Azure Container Registry is, is a private. You can you can use it in a private way. So it is you know it is controlled by you. And Docker Hub also you can use private, but there is a public repository as well. Most of the images are there in the public repository where you can use it in your Docker files. So this is one. So hopefully um, uh, we will try and see some some stuff, but that's how you can use it. So you can give it back to that. OK, so. Uh, now we have the registry, so all we need to do is go to access keys. OK, and uh, make sure it is enabled because we need to use this internally. We need to have another service connecting to this service, right? So we want to make sure that other services are also connected to this. So I'm going to make sure that it is enabled. Keys are enabled and we are ready with the registry now, right? We have a registry. And we had uh, built a image, so image is ready. So what is the image called?
this is the one right three minutes ago this is the one we built right so this is the one we packaged the same code which we had we wrote some docker file and we did package it that's it so that's done now i'll show you some amazing things which is i'm using vs code extension so here I'm going to go to Docker extension. So when you dock, when you go to Docker extension, let me close the code. As of now, I don't need it. So when you go to Docker extension, you can see, you know, you can see a bunch of images which is there on my box. It's on my box. This is this is not cloud. This is on my box. For your question, there is Docker Hub, there is Azure, where you can post your uh, images. So now I have this uh, image which we built. I'm going to push this image to Azure container registry, which we created. We created a container registry. I want to push this package there. So I'll go to Azure. I'll select Azure. So you can see that I'm selecting Azure. Once I select Azure, it will ask me which which registry. There are two registry already, but this is the one which we created, right? 001 is what we created, so we'll take that. And this is the path for my image. You can edit if you want to, otherwise you can use the same. So what it will do is now log into my portal. And it's not portal, basically it is talking to the API layer, which I showed you in the diagram, right? There was a REST API layer for Azure resource managers, right? It is talking to my resource manager. It is authenticating. It is getting trusted and there is verifying my subscription and everything. And then it says, OK, this guy is right to push this code or to put this package into the registry. And now it takes that part of the registry and you know, it takes with part of the code which we have done. Push it to the registry. So that is what it is doing. It is pushing the uh, image. Yes. Yeah. It's through my internet. It was not so it's not like that. So it's it this is not a one GB of data. It is chunk of things which is created. And it you know if you see here, it creates a it breaks the images into different chunks and then pushes the code. And then it lastly verifies SHA. If you see that uh, it verifies whether the code the data has gone correctly or not. Yeah. No, yeah. So it is just the uh, package which goes there. It, everything will not go. No, not 2 GB of data. No, no. It, it, will, be, it will take some time to push to different. <laughs> OK. Um, OK, we have done this, right? We have done the push and we did the code is out there now. Hopefully this will work. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll go to portal now. Now we just have the static representation of the code, which is the package, which is called as images. The difference between an image and a container is containers are running, it's executing. Image is static. Okay, so now I have the images. Okay, now I'm, I want to make sure. This image runs somewhere. So one of the service which I'm going to use is. Um, let me go to. Create resource again. Go to containers again because this is container. So I'll go to container instance. So this is a standalone way of executing app service, which we saw. The, the previous one, it's a full package. Right, you can package as an API. And you can create a plan which we saw the plan while creating it some configurations which we did right we did like linux box we want we want this one uh, the b1 um, you know app service plan standard set of plans we said we said some of the things when we did that we did we did some configurations here we are doing different kind of configuration you know i'm going to use the same resource group i'm going to use a uh, different name App demo 001, hopefully, uh, you know, here image source is there. 
you know, image source. Image source is nothing but the from where you're going to access this particular image, right? We have created container registry, Azure container registry. So that is what we are using. You can use other registries, which is there, which is Docker Hub. You can use it. Um, that is also possible. And I'm selecting this is the registry name. And the moment I select this is the registry name, it automatically updates the image and automatically it shows which of the versions you want. If I want to select different registry, I'll select different registry. It has different set of things. It has different versions as well, right? So I can do that away or I can take this as this and select this one version one and I'm just deploying it and I'm just going to name it as a public so wiki 001. I'm going to add 8080 access. And next. I'm just giving a command override there. This is my command or right. So where is it? It's here. So I'm giving a command or right. Just to start from where to start it. Review. Create instance. OK. OK, there is a question from uh, Banu in the chat, which, which is uh, which is basically does VS Code Docker extension need Docker desktop? Um, no, but Docker desktop is required now with the license. So if you are using it for personal and other thing is fine. But yeah, it's, extension does not require. But if you are using a couple of things with it and uh, you are running engine, Docker engine, you need a Docker desktop. Um, else you will have to use different ones, uh, different containers, which is there, right? OK, this got deployed. Hopefully. It is running on this. Command. Can can you just uh, so I, I just want to have an image where we can have set of set up Yeah, so you can create your own image for that. Basically, you can if you want to have a separate set of things which is commonly you are using. Yeah, you can commonly you are using a couple of things. You can create a image of that and you can import that image uh, into your uh, different Docker files uh, from a repository or something. Mm. Miss anything? Okay. 
so basically this should come up it takes some time because of the image or did i give anything wrong not sure Did I build it right? It's taking some time. I'm not sure. So this is how you're going to do it, right? So basically you have a code. You take that into a registry and you push it here. You are here. You are running it. While this is running, I'll show you one more interesting uh, way to deploy your microservices. That is, go to containers and go to container apps. So this is, if you know Kubernetes, and if you don't want to use, how many of you know Kubernetes? By the way, <laughs> not just heard it, used it. Okay. Okay. So, so basically, um, you know, basically there is an API layer for it, where you can interact to that API layer and get the access to the management layer, and you can get information about what are the pods which is running and all those things. What are the containers which is running and all those things. So, if you don't want to use that, um, you know, if you don't want to use that layer. All you have is a container, which is something which we have. You want to take that container and you want to deploy it. Um, you just take that and go and deploy it in the container apps in a Kubernetes style. OK, the reason why I'm telling it is a Kubernetes style because you can manage the traffic. You can manage it, it with uh, different environments. You can have different, uh, uh, you know, basically you can have pods kind of a structure where you can have multiple containers in the YAML file and you can deploy it here and it is kind of a microservice uh, kind of a thing and you just deploy it here and you can just access it with traffic control with dappers you can do uh, you know uh, the in, 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 you know ingress and other things which is there also through uh, the dappers here okay so that is something which you can do yep Yeah, so so the question here is uh, what is the difference between uh, Azure Kubernetes service and container apps? So Azure Kubernetes service is managed, right? As I told you, you can talk to the API layer of Kubernetes. So API layer of Kubernetes is is nothing but the management layer, right? Where you can say, hey, kubectl, get me pods. What are the po what are pods running and what are the services running? And you can run a couple of commands and deploy something through command line and all those things. You don't do that here. It is a serverless. It is the easiest way. So I'll show you how you can do it. Um, yes. It is very similar to Kubernetes. It's just you don't have the Kubernetes API layer. You don't have the Kubernetes API layer, but everything else you can do. The uh, Dapper is there for as a sidecar architecture. Dapper gets attached to your pod or a container, and then everything you can do. The traffic control, the RabbitMQ connect, uh, the dead storage connections, and everything is done through Dappers. So that is the uh, that is the power of this. So we'll create a new environment. I'll say new one. I'll use Canada. It's available only in few places, by the way. It's in preview. It's not available everywhere, so it's available only in few places. So I'm using some thing. So that's there. I'm going to use a sample app only. There is nothing new. There is a traffic. You can enable on 80. That's it. So I'm just showing you a simple container where you can do. You can add your own container, which we did very simple way uh, through this thing. 
OK. So. Yeah, so it is getting created. Um, let's wait for two minutes. Any questions until then? Yeah, so so the question here is um, people who are online. Um, the question here is uh, whether how how to use uh, how to choose the service. So basically how to choose which service to use if I am a startup. How to choose different services, whether I have to go for uh, managed services like Azure Community Service for containers specifically he's talking about containers. So whether I have to choose uh, Azure apps, uh, Azure container apps or container instance or Azure app service, which one to choose, right? Interesting question. Um, yeah, very interesting question. Um, I'll answer you now, but I have a learnathon for that. <laughs> uh, this month end on 20. Um, 28 uh, where we are going to be where we are going to do learning specifically on different set of containers on cloud, how you can choose different containers and other. It's a learnathon basically. Basically you will do it live. You will do it hands on. So I'm not going to do anything hands on. So uh, for your answer to your question is if you're an enterprise and and also if you're a startup and you are you have a, you are a scale motion, you are in a scale motion and you want to control the scale you want to make sure you have the management layer with you. Then you're going to use Azure Community Service and make sure that you have the management layer that is community the API layer where you're going to interact with the APIs through kubectls and other things and make sure it is ready. If you are having a simple web app and APIs basically a group of APIs basically and you want to host it and use it and yet be Kubernetes friendly and make sure that it is Kubernetes friendly and you want to use all of those services, which is Kubernetes specific services like ingress controlling, traffic controlling, connecting to different set of services, Prometheus for monitoring and all those things. You want to do all of those things and but you don't want to manage with clusters like Kubernetes cluster and other things, then you will go for Azure uh, container apps, right? And if you're a startup where you have a simple package like the Java package which I showed you, then you could just go and deploy it on Azure App Service and uh, use it with Azure App Service. But you have a couple of things where you just don't want to use resources at all, right? So basically um, you want to use it only when you are here or when, when somebody is here, right? Uh, so we are going to use this room only if you are here. Otherwise, we are not going to use it. So if you think from a scale perspective, right? You know, you're still maintaining this. Right? This room is maintained. Even whether you are there, you're not there. You're still maintaining it. But if you take this, take the same analogy, right? In the in a building a product. Uh, if you don't want to maintain this and you want to have it whenever you want, that's where you're going to use serverless. Right, and that's that's the point. So there are different set of services for different set of use cases. Um, so serverless uh, through containers again, but you're going to use it only when you want it, and you can use it unlimitedly as well. You can replicate unlimitedly, so you can go back and replicate this into different you know number of things, and you can control it as well. You can say, okay, I want to have only 100 people in the room, not more than that. So that also you can do it. So that is also a serverless. So that is what um, serverless means, right? It is about give, having your own set of things. So now you have app service, you have serverless as a choice, you have container Azure container apps, and Kubernetes you know, Azure Kubernetes service, which is a larger structure, and then you have VMs, right? 
So VM is also a scale motion and you can also scale there. You can also do stuff. But again, VM you have to maintain a lot and. It's cost effective as well in some point and the maintenance high, but these are the set of pass layers uh, which you can use. If you're a startup, you should be using pass layers uh, so that you can, you know, uh, control the way you're going to use it. And by the way, all of these things are running on containers. By the way, if you if you see the support is there for all containers, if you if you see my demos as well, the support for containers. So all of these things, um, you just have to make sure it is a container and that image is somewhere either in Docker Hub or in Azure Container Registry, and then you can switch between services. You can easily switch between services uh, based on your cost, based on your requirement, and all those things. So that's how uh, you have to design. If you are a startup, you have to think from a uh, scale motion. You have to think from the way you want to architect it, whether you want to re-architect it. You know, as a startup, you don't want to sit and spend time on react, or react, uh, no, architecting it. So you want to make sure that it's setting a motion for scale. So that's what you will design, right? So that's the answer. That's a long answer, by the way, but we're going to have a, a special uh, one half a day of Learnathon for that, where I'll give you a set of challenges uh, where you can pick different services and go back and you do it yourself and show me how you did it. So that will be the Learnathon uh, thing which we are having here. OK, so. So this is a simple app which we built, right? So this is. Uh, this is already there. I hope it will open here. So this is a container apps. We just use a simple image or nothing uh, specific. So I want to show you mo one of the most uh, interesting uh, tool. It, it will take some time to build the demo, but we are going to see that as a tool. We will, we will see how we can design a speech to text and text to speech. Right? I mean, I'm going to talk in some language. It is going to tell me something else in different language. So how you can build that app fast? Just using just using the SDK and use it and you can build it. And that's what you do at hackathons, right? You don't go to hackathons to you know sit and re-engineer stuff. You want to make use of things which is already there and engineer it in a better way and use it. So we will see that. A simple demo. Um, it will take some time to build it, but it is interesting. We'll build one use case. The rest of the use case, OK, we'll see later. So we'll do speech enabled app. So it's basically it will just you not know, translate OK, we'll not translate into different languages and the things you can do it. Uh, the next, you know, there is one more module out there which you can use. Uh, I'm going to put all of these modules in one of the GitHub repo and you can go back and play around with it. It has a lab, by the way, I'll show you. Um, so what I'm doing is, you know. Basically, this is Azure AI. So this is one of the cognitive services. There are a bunch of cognitive services. There is for um, we have almost a data scientist in a box, uh, basically, which is nothing but a Azure Auto uh, ML, uh, which is there. And there is, you know, we have um, custom vision. We have, um, you know, the uh, text to speech language and other things. We have uh, search as a cognitive service, uh, as a separate cognitive uh, service. Right, so there are a bunch of things. There are three more uh, services which is there, but this is one which we are using is uh, you know specifically for a language, and uh, these are the things which we are going to do. We are going to somehow recognize APIs. We are going to run a couple of APIs. We are going to build this app itself. So this is the way it is built. So I don't want to spend time in this. How it is built is what I'm going to show you. Okay, so you can see this. So basically, um, you know what it does is um, there are two things. It's basically an API. It's an SDK, right? So in this SDK, you create some of the objects, and it takes two special things. One is you need to configure it, so you need to have the service. So this is a pre-built AI. Okay. So when I say Azure AI, it is nothing but 
it has pre-built models and it has pre-built uh, everything ready for you and you don't have to be worried about building your own models all you need to do is to use that service right so to use the service you need to create a service so you go back and create a service once you go back and create a service you just need to uh, give the key and other things to access that service if somebody needs to give a key to access it right so that is one and then there is audio configurations when i say audio configuration you can input audio via mic or you can input audio via files okay you can have our input via files we can have input via uh, audio and other things and then there is a speech recognizer and other things which is out there and then a bunch of things right uh, duration and uh, reason for results and all those things you know we'll see what are these um, specifically for properties and this is uh, this is nothing but an object the speech recognizer is an object for that api and you create those configuration and audio configuration you pass it to the object and the object creates uh, calls an api which is async api and once it calls an async api it has a couple of things uh, from a properties perspective it's uh, it sets that property okay so we're going to build it um, again I, what i was talking about is speech to text this is text to speech okay so this is the same thing same structure it is nothing different you can see speech synthesizer is an again an object which has an input of speech configuration and audio configuration which is nothing but input audio via mic or the file then there is certain properties it gets out of those uh, speech text async uh, uh, object which we are going to get right so let us go and see i don't want to spend time here let's go and create one which is in the exercise so if you see here this particular module so how many of you know ms learn perfect so ms learn is where you get a lot of uh, learning you, you just need to go there and spend some time and you will get bunch of content and interestingly there is labs right if you see here this particular example has a lab so when you click on this you get four hours of lab and you can play around with the apis uh, it sets you it set up the apis it creates an environment for you so you don't have to be worried all i have done i have created my own environment but you can create your own i mean uh, you can use this lab but i have created my own environment so i'm using my environment so this is how we are going to do it now so okay so there is github repo that's it i have just taken the github uh, code and then we will create a cognitive service so how do we create a cognitive service so we'll go here and azure subscription region standard and everything fine oh so we'll go here we'll go to cognitive service i'll create a cognitive service you can easily create different different service you can see uh, there is a qna maker there is a face api a lot of things but here i'm using just the cognitive service there's a hack book there is any of these region again this region can be anything you can name it i'll name it wikibytes you can choose a sp standard you can say I agree to the response, be responsible AI, right? There is a bunch of things. You don't need to worry about this. Go tag. OK, so now I've just created. So it's basically creating a cognitive service for me. Once it creates a cognitive service, I just need to take the key. Key is required. One of the configurations which is required to access the APIs, right? You need to use the service. You need to, this service is nothing but a pre built model which is ready, right? So I just need to use the service. So you just pick this up, go to the resource. There are key and endpoints. Go to key and endpoints. So you have a couple of things here. So let us keep this open. 
and we'll see what needs to be done in terms of the code. So we will open the code as well. We won't open the code. Oh God. Why this is having a problem? Open the code. This is the air lab which we have. OK, so this is. I don't know, we are building seven. This is. What is it? What is it? What is it? There's a bunch of demos which I'm doing. So key and endpoint. OK. Cool, so I need to go to the. Uh, you know, you can see here. I need to go to this 07, which is speech. There's if you see the code base, the GitHub repo, which I was showing the code base, which is here, which is in this code base. There's a bunch of demos here. OK, so you can just go to the key, you know, go to that uh, GitHub repo. You will see a bunch of demos. You can just use the demos for building so many things. OK, so that is one of the thing which you can do at the hackathon. So 07 is where I'm using now from the example perspective. So you're going to go and uh, we'll right click on speaking clock folder and just open the integrated. This is the speaking clock folder. We will open the integrated terminal and run .NET command. So it installs .NET command. OK. So now it's done. So what is the next step? So what is the next step? Next step is I've, since I'm using, you know, dot net, I'm doing only those dot net related stuff. If you're using Python code, you can use the Python related commands, which is out there. So, you know, just go to the app settings now, which is which is to make sure that uh, we will change those uh, settings which is there. So we'll just go there and change settings in the. <coughs> OK, so here I need to change key. I need to give the key and I need to give which region I'm using this. So where is that information that's there here? I'm taking the key. Uh, I'm going to the code and changing the cognitive service key. And I need to change the location. So let us go back and change the location. <coughs> OK, so all we, all I'm doing is I'm, I've created a cognitive service. So cognitive service is nothing but as I told you, it is a a uh, pre-built model for you to use bunch of things, face APIs to, um, you know, the, you know, speech to text, text to speech translations and uh, object recognition, custom vision and everything. So it's it's a package, right? So you can just use it together or you can use it individually. So now I have the, uh, you know, the service re is ready here. So what I'm doing is after this, you know, we'll go and make some changes in the code. We are done. So we'll go open the uh, program.cs uh, file and we will import these two things. What are these two things? These are the configurations which we talked about in the diagram. If you saw, there are two configurations. We call those objects and that object was calling something, right? So this is what we are doing. So we're going to speaking uh, clock program.cs and you can see it has already been provided for you. Import namespace. This is part of the uh, .NET. This is nothing but an importing namespace. So I'm just importing the namespace here. OK, now. In the main function, there is configure speech service. So what is this configuration? If you remember, it's nothing but the keys we need to provide. 
we need to create a object for that key, right? So that is what we are doing here. So we'll go and say. It is already been provided for you. Configuration configure speech, so we are configuring it. OK, I want to save this. And let me go back here. I need to configure the voice. I'm going to configure the voice, which is nothing but the voice which we need. So we can have different set of voices, by the way, um, because it is a speech to text, text to speech, which we are building. So there is a voice, different voices we can have. Uh, you can also build synthesized voices, which is again, it is it is not anybody's voice. It's basically machine's voice, uh, which you can build on your own custom one, right? So what we will do, uh, we'll go and say, add this voice here. Right now we have the voice. Once we have the voice, what we should do? Configure speech service. Oh, this is we have done in Python. Sorry. So we need to go back and run .NET, right? So we have just configured it. We just need to go back and run .NET from the command line. So we'll go and run uh, .NET run. So we'll see what happens. We'll throw some warnings, I believe. And it says it's configured. OK, now if you see at the bottom, if you see this. Oh, I'm running with the low battery. But. Rashmita. I need a charger. OK, <laughs> I'm running with the low battery. <laughs> It's in white color. It's in my bag. OK, so this is um, ready to use speech service in Southeast Asia, right? So it, it is ready now. So hopefully. We will be able to get this done. So this is done. So now what we need to do is to configure recognizer. So we'll configure the recognizer. So this is a simple code again. This is to configure the file which one we are telling which is a microphone. It is not an audio file. So. It was down. There is one down. The other side. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. Oh, it was right. So, is, is it? It's charging, anyways. So, I'm just. Um, Taking this uh, and saving this. Now we will process the input. We need to add a package before we do this. So basically what we have done is now we have configured which needs to be the audio. Is it a file audio or is it a you know a microphone? OK, so now we have configured that now. So we need to add the process, right? So we can just go and uh, add it at the process. If you are using audio input as a file, you need to do these steps, but I'm not using uh, audio file, so I'm using the microphone, so I don't need to do this step. Now I'll, all I need to do is to go to the next uh, set of things, which is add code to process this, right? So we'll go and process the input code is here. So I'm going to copy this. So this code does nothing very, you know, it's very simple. So it, it creates that recognize once a sync, which is there, which is an object. You can create that object. And once you create that object, what it does is it creates that speech and then uh, it it runs through those uh, you know, speech to text uh, API 
and it captures all the information in the properties which was listed. If you remember, there were certain properties which was there. It it captures that properties and we put it in the console. We just put it out and you know, output it. That's all. So that's all it is doing as well. So we'll go here and process that input. OK, so I'm not going to run all the things. I'm just going to show you a couple of things. <coughs> Hope it will run. What time is it? Did you see this? Did anyone of you see this? Nobody saw it. I'll run it again. For the benefit. So. What time is it? So it is basically recognizing what time is it and it is actually uh, outputting the time since I said so at the start. It just converted my speech to a text and if you see this. I just converted into a. You know whatever I'm you know uh, putting input as an audio. It is converting it into a text, but now what I'll do is. What time is it? Shows me the time correctly. Sorry. So you need to configure it. So basically it, this is nothing but uh, speech to text. What I'm demoing is speech to text, but you can build a lot of other things on top of this and do a lot of stuff. So the app is right now I'm. I'm giving an input. It is giving me an output in the. Format right, but now sometimes there might be different people who want to hear it. Right, who want to hear what time is it right? So you can convert it into a. Audio. Text to speech, so the text which is there, it will convert that into an audio. So we will see that uh, how we can do that. Right, so this is. That is called a synthesized speech. So basically, it is, you know, it is giving me an audio output. So we'll go here and copy this code. This is in the same file. Um, not changing anywhere else. So if I go into my code, back to my code, here it is configure my speech. And there is a code for what you need to do. OK, so we can set this up. OK, now I am ready to run. Run it right. Oh. So where is the open integrated? No. So what time is it? Oh, <laughs> I made a mistake. What time is it? Why it is not synthesizing? Oh, my audio is my audio output is different. My audio output is there is somewhere else, <laughs> so I can't hear it. <laughs> so, yeah, output is in somewhere else. So I need to change the system system settings and other things. So it is telling, but it is telling it somewhere. I am able to hear, <laughs> but somewhere it is coming. <laughs> okay, so. Or you don't want to use Azure. Sometimes network connectivity is 
Okay. Yeah, it is there. You can use that. Yeah, but the, you can also use the SDK and dockerize it. No, you can. Once it is dockerized, you can. You can, you can. Yeah. So. I don't know where is my output. So I need to figure out where is the output of this speech. So I'll have to uh, see how it works there, <laughs> right? So uh, this is how it works. But by the way, this is what you have to give uh, in the code. This is how you have to code it in terms of adding a couple of uh, things in the you know, code and then use it. So um, it, it took everything, which is very nice, right? So that's how captions are built. <laughs> OK, so I'll, I'll go back to my slides. OK, so um, we did a bunch of things, right? So. So this is the hack book. So if you go to here, a couple of things I've updated. I'm going to update a couple of more th stuff. So this is one place stop for learning all of these things which I showed you. Uh, bunch of you know more services I will be adding there. Container apps is there already. Uh, how to use Azure App Service, code samples, everything has been packaged as one GitHub repo. So you can just go here and make use of uh, this hackbook whenever you are in a hackathon. So make use of it. Uh, you also have you know student passes and other things as well. So you use that, make use of it. As I told you, you can use your credit cards. There's no problem. I showed you the diagram how you can control it. Uh, use the same way how to control your stuff and do stuff. So that is one of the thing. OK. Uh, if you need any help, just connect with me. Uh, this is where you can connect. And uh, you know these are my digital coordinates, by the way. But I'll just wait for uh, the. Online folks, if you have any questions, uh, just type in the chat. Uh, happy to answer those questions. If you have any questions, just ask me. Probably, I don't know where is the mic, uh, but it's still I can read the answers. I mean, questions to the uh, people who are there online. Just once, one question is there. Okay, is on-demand video available of the session? Yes, it is there. So it's. It's basically being recorded and it is live streamed, so it is there. So it's all available. Right? Any questions? Now? No questions? Yeah. So we have uh, we have Learnathon. Uh, we have not yet started with Hacknet yet, but Learnathon is for sure. Uh, it's on 28th uh, of this um, month, this month itself. But that is specifically you have to do it. Uh, so you have to come here, and I'm going to give you five to six challenges. Um, which is on containers on cloud. So you have to pick right set of services. So I'm going to explain those which of those services are available and which services you can pick. And when you pick it and you have to try and build something like this, put it in the container registry, see how it works and you yourself do it. And uh, and then then we will all meet back again after you do it. We'll meet again and we will discuss why each one of us took those kind of st strategies and other things. I'm going to talk less. You're going to talk more. If you are here on that day, you're going to talk more. Uh, but yeah, that's what it is. So Hacknet, it's not there. Any, uh, you're not sure yet, but Learnathon is for sure. It is, uh, it's there. It's there in the meetup.com. Um, you just go to meetup.com reactor um, and on 28th it's there. I, I'm not sure if spots are left because it looks like there's a 
you know already uh, sports are filled but you just take a look at it uh, we're going to add more probably i'll add more slots uh, so that people can come in as well any questions so there is a question um, from uh, balaji any prerequisites we need for learnathon yes um, not softwares uh, but have an azure subscription free subscription ready uh, so that you can explore the services you can explore things you can go back and do stuff so come with uh, you know come with your laptop ready with azure subscription uh, there is a 200 dollar subscription free subscription available out there just go and pick that up and uh, that link is there in the you know link is available in in the registration okay so you can just go there and pick it up and uh, yeah so you can just go and register there nothing else to you know prerequisites out there apart from that uh, maybe simple ones like the docker you know probably docker engine and everything ready with you because it is containers on cloud so you need to build containers on your laptop as well so it's better to have docker engine installed i'll give you internet no worries Yeah. OK, so uh, there is a question whether we have to use uh, Azure Kubernetes service or any other cloud providers Kubernetes service. So it all depends upon your requirements and how it is required and how you want to use it and all the stuff. And each of each of uh, cloud providers have their own set of strengths and based on that strength. You will take a call and you know it's not just about uh, the service right so most of the most important thing is also about the support the you know the community support the you know how skilling support is there and how do i skill my people with this service it is is it available is it available for free is it available in different options and uh, is there policy support and various things so you will see all of these things and then choose a service. So if you're building that for a company, then that's what you choose. Right. Any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions? Ah. Hmm. So functions uh, see that the, the question is uh, should I use container Azure you know container instance or anything versus functions? So functions take some time to come up to spin up because it is it is always in the sleep mode and you can have one replication running you can set that so always run one application so that you know i don't go on a sleep mode but if most use cases you will have it in the sleep mode uh, so whenever there is a first request comes in it it takes some time to come up okay but that is not the case with the rest of the other services which is out there but you know uh, even in the function scenario, right? It's more of async. I want to use functions in more of an async scenarios where I'll just say, hey, do this and just don't worry about the response. You know, I just like do this. OK, right? So it's, like, it's just like how you take coffee, right? You, you go and say, I need coffee. You'll wait for coffee to come. So that means you have a request. You did a you know, uh, you ask for a coffee and it responded with coffee, right? You would take that coffee, right? But in a thing, you don't do that. You'll just say, okay, you know, just do this and you'll just move out. Just like how we tell at home, right? For mom, do this and escape. <laughs> so that's what we do, right? Yeah. That's an analogy, but yeah, that's what, that's what it works. Yeah. No question. 
all understood everything yeah Efficiency of the code from what perspective? Like, and time of execution should not. Ah, uh -huh, that is there. That you can. That is uh, duration of execution, right? You can only execute for five minutes, five seconds. By the way, you can increase it. You can increase it, but that is also limited. It's not. It is not like you can increase unlimitedly and you can keep running the script, but you can still limit it. Yeah. <coughs> Anything? Cool. Uh, thank you, everyone. Not for you folks. It's for online folks for that. Thank you for joining in. And uh, we will see more of this because people have joined uh, all over the places, uh, not just from the, you know, uh, from the city, but from different cities. Uh, and from the same city also they are joining in from different places, which is which is great. So thank you folks who have joined online uh, being patient here because we have to juggle with in person and online. Both the people we are seeing all the things out there, which is good, uh, which is great to have everyone here. Uh, thanks folks for joining. Um, we'll be closing off that uh, online access now. So thank you again. So for you folks, we are still here. We can still chat. 